Good evening. My name is Zechariah Akimbele. So today we'll be talking on the lesson six, sniffing and man in the middle attack. Sniffing and man in the middle attack. In this lesson, we're going to focus on traffic sniffing and man in the middle attack. We will delve into a little more involved and at times difficult aspect of testing. Although it tends, take your time and ensure that you fully understand the basic TCP slash IP and communications of system across networks. So we'll be discussing what is sniffing. We'll be discussing about sniffing in action, the basic of ARP. We'll look at the various sniffing tools. And uh, we'll look at the man in the middle attack. We also look at the various attacking tools. And we also look at the how to intercept a simple SSL traffic. So what is sniffing? We have two types of sniffing. We have passive sniffing and active sniffing. So under the active sniffing, we have the map flooding and the ARP flooding. So I will explain both later on. So when we are talking of passive sniffing, the passive sniffing attacks are performed by just watching packets on a network in order to gather sensitive information, such as user IDs, password, and other sensitive information. They are difficult to be detected due to their hands off approach to gather information. The only thing you need is a sniffer, such as wire sharp. Active sniffing is performed by actively performing malicious operations such as smart flooding or ARP poisoning on the network. This means that we inject packet on the network in order to redirect the traffic. As you can imagine, different from passive sniffing, this is not a steady technique. So active sniffing can easily be detected by your various detection technology that you have put in place. Let's talk about mark flooding. So the first technique is for mark flooding. We briefly introduce it here, but we we'll explain it in more details later. So we are talking about mark flooding. It's meant to stress the switch and fill its CAM table. A CAM table gives all the info required to forward frames to the correct port. So we are talking about mark flooding. Just in about you loading your switch and uh, and uh, and uh, and your mark uh, is just about stress and uh, flooding your switches so that it be overwhelmed. When the space in the the cam is filled with fake MAC address, the switch cannot learn the MAC address. The only way to keep the network alive is forward the frames meant to be delivered to the unknown MAC address on all parts of the switch, without making it fail open or act like a pop. So this will um, defeat the purpose of this or the switch. So let's talk about the ARP poisoning. You can also call it ARP spoofing. So this is the most steady among the active sleeping techniques. It does not need to bring down switch functionality. Instead, it explains the concept of traffic redirection. This is one of the most used attack to perform a man in the radio attack. By exploring the network via ARP poisoning, the attacker is able to redirect the traffic of the selected victims to a specific machine, usually the attacker's machine. Doing this will enable the attacker to not only monitor, but also modify the traffic. Notice that although ARP poisoning is mainly used to mount a man in the middle attack, otherwise known as MITM, it can also be used to just the network before seeing the attack in action. So let's quickly explain how this thing works. So the ARP stands for Address Relationship Protocol, and it is valuable and supported by all NICs and operating systems. ARP can be developed to be a quick way to match layer three network address, app address with layer two MAC address. ARP protocol recognizes two types of ARP packets. The first packet is 
CRP request and the second one is ARP reply. ARP works in conjunction with ARP table, which stores the IP IPS and a time to leave value related to entry to each entry. So let's just quickly take a look. Uh, this command can. Uh, so let's just take a look on how, if I want to look at the ERP table, whether on Windows or Linux command. On Windows, I can just simply type ERP dash A. Why on Linux, I can type just ERP. So let me just quickly switch over to my uh, command line. So these are the, if you look at this, these are the different uh, interfaces and different, uh, this is the address, the MAC address. You can see that the, the is, let me scroll down, scroll up from my, these are the different interfaces. For interface 192.168.1. These are the available uh, IP address to so display both the IP address and the MAC address, which is also known as physical address. These are the available IPs. For this particular interface, these are the available IPs. And the corresponding MAC address, the first one is dynamic. For this particular IP interface, these are the various uh, for Linux, it's almost the same thing, but uh, you just simply type uh, ARP. Sorry, let me. So these are the available uh, MAC address. For this box, maybe because I've not, uh, is, is the network is not connected to other interfaces. You can see that the command is almost uh, the same. But on Windows, you put dash A. And if you want to get familiar right, with the use of ARP on, uh, on Linux, you use a man command to get to know how you can leverage on the user. So you can take your time, like five minutes, to study the manner for Windows. You say that you type ARP dash H or just simply type ARP to so display the usage. So you get familiar with this because these are very uh, commands that you need to learn when it comes to network sniffing and uh, man individual attack. Even though we did some deep diving on lesson four. And we, uh, where we make use of our escape uh, module on an, on, on our Linux environment, actually on, on Python. So uh, we also did a demonstration on how to do some sniffing and uh, on lesson first.